some of America's top CEOs are calling for passage of the bipartisan infrastructure package. Build Together, a group focused on fixing national infrastructure, working with businesses to foster bipartisan support for this bill. Joining me right now is Build Together co-chairman and former Dow Chemical chairman and CEO, Andrew Liveris, joining us today from Australia. Andrew, it is great to see you. Thanks very much for being with us today. Uh, tell us about Build Together and why this is so important uh, to come together to pass this infrastructure package. Thank you, Maria. Nice to be with you as well. I um, would say to you, when uh, President Biden was elected not long after, Dennis Meal, the former chairman of U.S. Corrugated, who I knew very well for many years, called me and said, hey, you've worked for two presidents, President Obama and President Trump. Uh, surely you can help pull a bipartisan group of CEOs together, uh, significant companies in different sectors across the economy, not to um, uh, replace the work of BRT or any of the other groups like NAM and Chamber, but really to focus in on how to get an infrastructure built across the line for the first time in decades. And really, this group of CEOs um, worked really diligently under the radar for six months. We talked to both sides of the aisle. We focused on the Senate. We focused on where the key votes would come from, finding those 10 you know, Republican senators, finding the Democrat senators that shouldn't oppose the bill. And really, this build together concept really and scoping this bill for the right size such that it wasn't punitive to business was our goal. And frankly, uh, I've been very surprised at how much uh, listening we got. Uh, the White House listened, the uh, senators listened, both sides of the aisle listened, and we've come out now with this um, very public statement saying, let's get this over the line. Look, let's not go to the next bill. Let's not worry about what might happen in reconciliation. Let's get this one over the line. America needs yeah. modern infrastructure. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think there's real agreement on both sides of the aisle that we need to see infrastructure updated in this country for sure. But what about politicians tying it to that reconciliation package? Look, Andrew, you've run major businesses, global businesses. You've run a balance sheet. You understand debt and the impact of debt. Another three and a half trillion dollars taking debt to 28, 29 trillion dollars in the United States. What kind of an impact? At some point, doesn't that actually come back to roost? Of course. And, um, you know, look, Mitch McConnell is staying very quiet and letting the senators go and vote yeah. on this one, but obviously also oppose reconciliation later. This is, Maria, the term policy, not politics, needs to enter our vernacular. I, I know that's been hard in a divided country with a divided, you know, executive branch and Congress for so long. We've all sort of gotten used to it. But I was CEO during the time when it was less divided and trying to find a way to get the right policy in in this framework across the line in a bipartisan way. And then, of course, when this other notion comes, the one you've just raised, massive spending, massive debt, uh, raising taxes, then let's go work on that and figure out that that shouldn't happen and some other thing should happen. But let's get this one over the line. It'll send such a strong yep. signal to business and, yep. frankly, to society, better roads, better rails, bridges. Let's get some broadband fixing. Let's get the clean infrastructure. This is pro-renewable standards, pro pro-clean energy, and it's not punitive to business. That's why business should stand yeah. up and support this package. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and make it the priority that it should be. Andrew, I'm happy to see you and your colleagues uh, taking a stand here. I want to get your take on China, Andrew, given your long history and experience in global business. We've got the State Department official Wendy Sherman traveling to China next week. This is going to be the first face-to-face -face meeting of senior officials in more than three months, Andrew, and you know that the Chinese officials schooled our officials in Alaska three months ago. Tell me your thoughts on attacking what has been really a bad actor on the on the global stage, uh, whether it be, you know, dumping cheap products on the world stage, which is something you obviously saw when you were uh, running a, a global corporation or the theft of intellectual property, the, the, the bullying of its neighbors, uh, China, the, 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 the cover up we're seeing on, on COVID-19. 
What kind of approach needs to be done to take on China's bad behavior, in your view? Yeah, your, your question hits the one major threat to a global economic recovery that's out there, which is we have tailwinds, you know, the let's call it the post-pandemic world, even with the Delta variant, the U.S. economy, the Chinese economy, the Asian economies are all coming back. And, you know, it's not roaring back, but it's all coming back. And, you know, people are feeling very good, except for this risk. And this particular risk, the saber rattling that's occurred on both sides, is actually a doubling down of something that's been developing for a couple of decades. I mean, China's now gotten to a point where it has its own technology, where it has claim to many of the modern things that it need, needed before from America. And in fact, this special trade advisory that was put on, uh, a China advisory by, by the administration for Xinjiang, is an indicator that actually, frankly, we ought to start watching, you know, what goes on inside of China in terms of standards. So I actually, I've never seen it as bad as this, Maria. I mean, I've been going to China since the 70s. I guess I'm aging myself here. But as CEO, I went to, you know, over the last the 15, 20 years I was around as CEO. I mean, I went there a lot. And we always found a way to bridge the divide. I'm really concerned now that we may not find our way, that we are actually creating two circles of global business, one very centered on the United States and one very centered on China. And countries are going to have to choose their supply chains. I am pro onshoring supply chains and minimizing risks such as semiconductors and other critical things like critical minerals, batteries, you name it. Uh, the United States needs to get self-sufficient in many of these critical industries um, because we cannot count on the China supply chain. Doesn't mean we don't make yeah. transactional relationships occur. I think you can have transactional relationships based on need, but you better have diversification as part of your risk mitigation yeah. strategies. Yeah, it, it, it's an important point to make in the face of uh, really this uncertainty uh, around this growing power. Andrew, it's good to see you. Please come back soon. Thanks very much for joining me this morning.